Hello everybody and welcome to the fourth assignment. In this phase we will look at the underlying interests, needs and motives of the stakeholder when negotiating on comments and shared resources. Roger Fisher and William Uri were the first authors in the field of negotiation research suggesting the important role of parties' interests with respect to the finding of mutual satisfying sustainable agreements. Fisher and Uri explain that negotiations often take the form of positional bargaining. In this type of bargaining, each party begins with their position by claiming specific resources. The parties then negotiate from their separate opening positions to agree on mutual accepted position at the end of the negotiation. Haggling over the distribution of a shared resource such as claiming a certain amount of water, is a typical example of positional bargaining. Fisher and Uri argue that positional bargaining will not produce sustainable agreements. Rather, it is an inefficient means of reaching win-win solutions and the outcome reached through positional bargaining tend to neglect the party's underlying interests. Effective negotiation strategies focus on the party's interests rather than on positions. As Fischer and Uri explain, your position is something you have decided upon. Your interests are what caused you to so decide. Thus, defining a problem in terms of positions means that at least one party will lose the negotiation. However, when a social conflict is defined in terms of the party's underlying interests, it is often possible to find a solution that satisfies party's needs and motives. Thus, the first step is to identify the party's interests regarding the resources at hand. This can be done by asking why the parties hold the position they do and by considering why they don't hold another position. Each party usually has a number of different interests underlying their positions and interests may differ somewhat among the members of each side. Once the parties have identified their interests, they must discuss them together. If parties want the other parties to take their interests into account, they must explain these interests to the other parties in a clear manner. In sum, parties should keep a strong focus on their interests, but they need to remain open to different proposals and positions. So what is the role of interests in negotiations on shared resources and commons? From a psychological perspective, interests can be defined as desires and concerns that motivate people to take a certain position in a negotiation. The difference between interest and position is a very important one, as seemingly incompatible positions might still contain win-win potential when looking at the underlying interests. In the illustrative example provided by Mary Follett, with the two sisters negotiating on the distribution of an orange, the sisters' incompatible positions are reflected in their respective claims to receive the whole orange. However, the sisters' underlying interest and the corresponding preferences for different sub-resources of the orange allow for an integrative win-win agreement. One sister with the interest to drink orange juice had a strong preference for the pulp, while the other sister with the interest to bake a cake had a strong preference for the peel. It is important to keep in mind that our interest can be rooted in different human needs and motives, such as our physiological needs, for instance our need for nourishment, or our social needs, for instance our need for affiliation. With respect to the orange example, one of the sisters' interest to bake a cake could be rooted in her need for nourishment, but also in her need for affiliation, for example, when the cake will serve as a friend's birthday present. So, let me give you an example from the field of commons. Behind the interest of joining a community garden can be different needs, such as again the need for nourishment, or the need for affiliation, or even the need for self-actualization to learn new skills in a new environment. Roger Fisher and William Uri already pointed out that parties should analyze the underlying interests behind their positions. One may even want to take this approach one step further and think about the party's underlying needs and motives. 
This psychological perspective with a clear focus on human motives and needs may pave the way in finding mutual satisfying agreements and negotiations on comments and shared resources. Dean Pruitt and Peter Carney Wally described three strategies how parties could benefit from knowing the other party's interests, motives or needs. First, the authors suggest that the understanding of the other party's interests may help them to engage in the so-called strategy of lockrolling. When parties lockroll, they offer resources that they value less in exchange for gaining resources that they value more. In other words, in the trade-off process of lockrolling, the loss of some low-preference resources is traded for gains of other high-preference resources, resulting in an overall gain for all parties. For instance, if two parties negotiate on the access to a border river and one party has a high preference for electricity generation, while the other party has a high preference for agriculture irrigation, one party may build a power station on the upper river portion, while the other party may use the water for its agriculture at the lower end of the river. Another way to take advantage when understanding the other party's interests, motives and need is the so-called strategy of expanding the pie. When parties expand the pie, they increase the number of available resources so that both sides can get what they want. Thus, if two parties negotiate on the distribution of a small amount of water from a border river during summer times, they may decide to jointly build a reservoir dam storing the water that accumulates during winter. Finally, parties may create new options for integrative win-win agreements through adding additional resources to the negotiation that have not been considered so far. This strategy of solving underlying concerns is similar to the expanding the pie strategy. However, instead of increasing available resources, this strategy aims at discovering new interest-relevant resources that have not been considered thus far. For instance, if one party wants to have access to a border river for national security reasons, while the other party wants to have access to the river for economic reasons, they may agree that both sides will have access to the border river. In addition, they agree that the river area will be declared as demilitarized zone under the control of the United Nations forces. Thus. The additional resource of UN military forces may help both parties to satisfy their individual concerns. To sum up, many social conflicts of resources that seem to be intractable can be solved if parties take each other's interests, motives and needs into account. This holds true for negotiations on political or international conflicts as well as for negotiations on shared resources and comments.